a father's greatest gift, comma, faith. Father's greatest gift, faith. I just want to talk briefly on this Father's Day about the greatest gift that you can give your children, the greatest legacy that you can leave, the greatest thing that someone could look at you and say about you when it's all gone. Will it be said that you were a man of great faith? Well. And ladies, please don't feel left out because you can include yourself in this Amen. also. But since it's Father's Day, I just want to focus on the fathers, but it is applicable to us all. Right. Will it be said that you are a man of great faith? The Bible says, I mean, the dictionary actually says that a father is a male parent. Also, it describes the father as the originator. And then one definition even describes a father as God. Right. We know that he is our heavenly father. Yeah. And we know that he's faithful. Yeah. So we're not going to focus on him too much. We're going to focus on you. Because right. we know God always going to do what God said he's going to do. Yeah. But we, we need more faithful fathers. Uh -huh. And I looked at this text, and it's so interesting because this young man by the name of Jairus, was a ruler of the synagogue. Yeah. He was a man in authority. He was a man of power. He was in charge of the service of the synagogue to make sure that everything is in order. In our society, we are taught as men most of the time not to cry. Uh -huh. We're taught to be strong, don't show your feelings, to be the breadwinner, yeah. to make sure that you, when people look at you that they see this exterior tough uh, a bronze of a man that's able to look out for his family, but how many times, how many of you know that sometimes they may see that on the outside, but that's not what's going on on the inside? Well, I'm not going to give away too many secrets, man. Don't get, don't get afraid. But just like any, any other human that of the opposite side, we go through things too. Mm -hmm. uh, Something said sometimes. We have difficulties too. But a lot of times we can't express our difficulties because God has called us to be leaders. Right. And so sometimes when you are a leader, what we term today, or have called the term, you just have to man up. Right. Sometimes, and you can witness to this, you got to go to work when you don't feel like going to work. You got to do things sometimes as a parent that you don't feel like doing. You make sacrifices that you can't talk about because you feel like God has put you in that place to lead the family. And as a father, many times, and even in these difficult times, I know some fathers that have gotten laid off from their job and they feel insignificant and like, God, what am I going to do? But this is the time that you don't lean on your own understanding, but you trust in the Lord and say, the Lord will make a way somehow. You, you see, you know, and, uh, and then people will say, well, what is your plan? My plan is the word of God. I'm leaning and depending on what God has said. I'm calling the men to rise up in faith and to stand up and say, you know what? Whose report will you believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. I know things may look difficult and it may look like that burdens are on every hand and dark clouds dim the sky every day, but I came by to tell you, if you just get a little bit of faith, if you just learn to hold on to what God said, if you just learn to grab a hold of his word, and as men of God, if we just declare the word of the Lord and say, the Lord said this is going to happen, we will be great men and we will leave a legacy for our children and our spouses. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. And so, in this text, we meet a young man by the name of Jairus. And, and, and nothing drives you to God like a tragedy. Has anyone ever suffered a tragedy or been through something traumatic? Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we take the wrong approach to tragedies. I know tragedies are not enjoyable. And I know no one looks forward to tragedies. But tragedies have a way of taking us back to the creator, the originator, God the Father. Tragedy has a, has a, has a tendency to make us forget about all the things that we thought were important and really focus on what really is important. And just like uh, 
uh, this just like pain, it comes in to make you aware that there's a problem somewhere. Yeah. Tragedy does the same thing, and a lot of times it's a spiritual awareness. Man, I haven't been praying like I should have been praying. I haven't been as thankful as I should have been. I haven't been giving God praise like I should have been. So sometimes, even in the midst of our tragedy, that's why we can give thanks and say, Lord, if it had not been for this tragedy, I wouldn't have known how good you were. And so Jar Jairus is faced with a tragedy we see here in the text that his daughter is ill and ill unto death. Yes. And he's faced with a situation that will require faith because the sentence is death. The, yes. the outcome is bleak, is dim. Anybody got some bleak outcomes yes. in your lives right now? Got some things that's dim. The sun does not look like it's going to shine. Baby, I came by to tell you this morning that the sun is always shining. Yes. I don't care how cloudy it is outside. Baby, the sun is always shining. You just got to hold on through the storm. You just got to get on a firm foundation. They pray at the rock, and you got to learn to hold on through the storm to let you know that everything is going to be all right because in the midst, your weeping is going to endure for a night, but if you can just hold on, joy shall come in the morning. But a lot of times, we don't have the faith to hold on to the morning. And so he comes because evidently he had heard something. That's why it's good to go to Bible study. It's good to go to church. It's good to fellowship because when those dark times come, you have to have something on the inside that can pull the faith out of you. The Bible declares, I see I'm going to have to work real hard. Come get my jacket this morning. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. See, see, you got to hear something, but we, we are listening to a lot of things. It didn't, I want you to understand the principle. You're going to get faith one way or the other. What you hear is going to give you faith in that. So if you're constantly listening to negative things, guess what? You're going to have faith in every negative report. If you're 